Well, thanks very much, uh, uh, Veronica. I, I am a chair of uh, Cancer Australia Advisory Council, but uh, much more importantly, um, I've been deeply involved with the uh, the issue of the cancer reform agenda in this great state of ours, Victoria. So uh, let me start by f uh, firstly welcoming you all to this uh, particular summit. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but also I must acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting and pay my respects to their elders past and present and the elders from other communities who might be here today. So as Veronica said, the uh, Pancreatic Cancer Summit this is the sixth in the series of summits. I just happened to notice uh, on your agenda at the top here, I'm going off script here which is always very bad, it says that the Victorian Tumor Summits are forums to identify unwarranted variations in tumour-based clinical practice and cancer outcomes for statewide action. Now, I absolutely agree with that. But they have another function. Um, they are a, a gathering together of people who have an interest in a particular cancer uh, and endeavouring and helping the people who are interested in, in this case, pancreatic cancer, to work together and understand the problem on a statewide basis. Uh, the whole of the cancer reform agenda has been designed to remove uh, a one-on-one -on -one approach to a cancer patient. That is, a single doctor looks at a single patient, says, I think this is what you need, and send them off the way. Uh, we, we know that uh, a key part of the optimal care pathways, which I'm, I hope I don't have to introduce you to, is multidisciplinary care, multidisciplinary treatment planning to work out the treatment options and multidisciplinary care uh, in the longer term uh, with, with issues such as survivorship being a major element in the care of patients with pancreatic cancer. So the, the issue of owning the, the problem of pancreatic cancer in the state, I think it's, an, it's a terribly important one and I do hope you all go away with the view that you all own the whole problem of pancreatic cancer and our, our interest is in improving the outcomes from pancreatic cancer which are dismal as we know and improving them in, in a sta on a statewide basis. So we'll hear a lot about uh, uh, variations in care, variations in outcomes. We don't know as much about variations in care, uh, and uh, you'll have a chance to discuss that today. So um, I, I must pay tribute to uh, Catherine Whitfield, who is here, who heads up the Cancer Strategy and Development Group within the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, and Catherine uh, has a... She's an, uh, she is a, tells me she's an old coder. I don't know if you remember the coders, but they are people who are meticulous, and she has meticulously worked to get what all clinicians want uh, to back up their feelings about a particular disease, in this case pancreatic cancer. That is, get some data behind the discussion. And uh, I have to congratulate Catherine for the work she's done in bringing together uh, this particular part of the work. I also have to congratulate uh, NIMIX and, and Paul Mitchell uh, who have been pushing this uh, for a number of years and as, you, as you've heard we're at our sixth on the sixth of our tumour summits. So just uh, I will sit down in one moment I wanted just to uh, mention uh, that I've already had a chat to uh, uh, Janine who's here who's from uh, our consumer her both her parents have had uh, cancer of the pancreas, so she's really been through it. So grateful that you're here and able to uh, uh, contribute to the discussion. Pancreatic cancer is, of course, uh, uh, a terrible cancer, and uh, the the human issues, uh, the family issues of a, of the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer are immense. So we are very very aware of these. The three things that we want to try and do in terms of better outcomes are better survival, of course, and the survival is bad, as we know. Uh, better patient experience, difficult to measure, and we really can't measure that in, in a way that we can measure other things today. And in some ways, getting a, a more constant uh, care plan for patients with pancreatic cancer so we can look at uh, managing the cost elements of of pancreatic cancer care. That's also something we're not going to be talking about today. But they're the three things that we, we like to see in terms of an output. 
Now on the slide we have uh, the OCPs for pancreatic cancer, which uh, uh, you, can, you have already read that I'm sure, which I'm sure you know about. I think there's another slide there too. Uh, and the, the optimal care pathways, I, I guess, is also a bit of a advertising program. I'd like you to really, if you haven't become very much aware of what's in, what's in these and what's involved with these, I'd be grateful if you would take them on um, because they have a real national imp impact, they have a real national import, uh, the government likes them, they're, they're agreed nationally and so it's very important for all of us to be on side and help with their implementation and the understanding of how the patient pathway is in concordance with the optimal care pathways. So uh, with that, uh, Veronica, I will uh, happily open this particular pancreatic summit. Thank you.